Hey guys, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Black Lightning Season 3 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 7, The Book of Resistance, Chapter 2, Henderson's Opus. And this episode was pretty good. I enjoyed this one quite a lot. And before we get into talking about Episode 7, I just want to give a quick recap of what's happened so far from the end of Episode 6. Now, Gamby has already learned the truth that Khalil is alive after going to his grave and discovering that his coffin is empty. We also see that Lin's addiction to green lights is slowly spiralling out of control. We also see Henderson has recruited Jamila to be the voice of their resistance as the resistance looks to take down the ASA once and for all. And also we saw everybody in Freeland's dealing with the aftermath of Tavon's death. So there was quite a lot going on in this last episode. So with that all said, let's get right into it. Let's talk about episode seven, the book of resistance, chapter two, Henderson's Opus. So as we start off this episode, we see things aren't going well for Grace, as we see her medication is not working and she's shape-shifting out of control. We see her in a child's form when Anissa finds her and she helps her with a relaxation technique to help calm her down. We then see Grace is freaking out about the ASA and is worried that they will take her, especially since Anissa's powers have yet to return. Meanwhile, at the Pierce house, Jennifer looks at old photographs of Khalil when Odell texts her. Hmm. Meanwhile, Gamby confirms that Khalil and the ASA agent Painkiller are one in the same, and he's called Lynn to his bunker to get access to the pit so he can access the organization's mainframe. At the church, the resistance tries to form their next steps with the ASA closing in on them. Jennifer goes to meet Odell, who is apparently still alive and well, but instead meets the acting director who reveals Odell was shot but he is not dead. There you go. Can't keep a good villain down, that's all I've got to say. The acting director grounds Lightning and tells her that she can't use her powers because of the Markovian threat. Jennifer isn't buying it and asks for all the information the ASA has on Dr. Jace in order for the new girl to earn her trust. Meanwhile, the Resistance makes a play with Henderson and the Reverend waiting for a bomb to go off at a checkpoint so they can drive through. Black Lightning shows up and defuses the bomb and ruining the plan. The next day, Henderson confronts Jefferson and they fundamentally disagree over how to deal with the ASA situation. As the pit, a new doctor flatters Lynn and the acting director shows up while she's working with one of the stabilised metas. She wants them to be functioning at 100% so Lynn demands access to all of their files. The acting director grants it but just for the green light metas. At school, Jennifer and Brandon are talking when a Markovian attack drill starts and the pair duck into a safe place together. Jennifer tells him that she can help him find Dr. Jace. At the church, the ASA comes to break down the door which is technically in violation of the law but the children are not there. They're all hiding at two bits. Anissa calls Jefferson to her place and asks for his help escorting children out of Freeland. Jefferson disagrees with her work with the resistance and Jefferson focused on his ideologies but Anissa really needs his help. She's worried about Grace as she's still injured and she needs him to step up as her father and to help her out. As the pit, Lynn gets Gamby to the mainframe. In Freeland, the ASA continues their door-to-door -door terror of campaign and clashes with what appears to be Markovians hiding in a house. Black Lightning shows up and neutralizes the threat, much to the shock of the ASA forces, but when one of the ASA soldiers murders people, the acting director threatens Black Lightning by telling him she'll call airstrikes on the city if he doesn't back down. In the pit, Gamby discovers that indeed Khalil is alive and well and is working with the ASA. It turns out it's a lot more complicated than that. Khalil is more than just alive. The ASA keeps him in stasis and has a chip in him that mostly controls him. So that's why Khalil is doing the things he's doing because he's being controlled with a chip in his head. Interesting. After confirming his memories are still intact, 
Lin wakes him up and he knows her from his files, but he's still very, very cold. Gamby asks him to state his recent missions and he reveals all of his atrocities, including the murder of his mother, which we saw a few episodes back. Lin returns him to stasis and is determined to save him against Gamby's advice. She tells him to leave. He reveals he has now given her administrative rights to the ASA network. Jennifer tries to find out what happens when her and Brandon's powers start to emerge, but he wants to know what she knows about Jace, which is nothing, so he kicks her out. Anissa takes a teen form Grace to Black Lightning so he can get her out of Freeland. At the bar, the Reverend doesn't trust Black Lightning and monologues, but ultimately they move with the ASA nearby. As Black Lightning attempts to get the kids out, things go horribly wrong. The ASA shows up and the acting director tells the soldiers to kill all of the kids. Black Lightning stands between them and uses his powers to fight back. Anissa wants to go and help but Gamby won't let her leave his bunker. Black Lightning gets all of the kids back but Grace runs away so Black Lightning leaves a girl named Natalie in charge while he goes to find her. Unfortunately Grace turns into a leopard and attacks an ASA soldier and then Black Lightning finds the mangled body. The leopard then menaces Black Lightning but shifts to Grace when she realises it's him and that it's Anissa's dad. At home, we see Jennifer gets the Dr. Jace files from the ASA while in the pit. Khalil tortures his sparring partner and is given a new target to go after, Black Lightning, and that's how episode 7 ends. Very good episode. Very intense once again as we saw all of the kids being trying to taken out of Freeland to safety and I enjoyed it. It was, it was really good. I'm just wondering whether or not we will see Black Lights enjoying this little alliance. Time will tell really but I like that the fact that everyone's on the same side and they all have the same goals but they go about it in different ways so that made for some interesting scenes and some great dialogue from everybody but Overall, I enjoyed this episode a lot. I thought this was very, very well done and very, very intense. And I'd just like to quickly say that I'm really enjoying Season 3 so far. I think Season 3 has been really, really good. But not to give too much away, the ride's far from over. We're just getting started and that's going to be for another video for another time. So I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of episode 7? Did you enjoy it? What's your thoughts on Agent Odell not being dead after all? Are you surprised or not really? What do you think about Black Lightning and this little alliance butting heads with each other? Do you think ultimately they were all joined forces or do you think they're still going to clash? What's your thoughts on Khalil being brainwashed with a chip? and being programmed to go after Black Lightning. What do you think could happen there? You know what to do guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below, and I will be back next time for another edition of the Black Lightning Season 3 review series, where I'll be talking about Episode 8, which I am very much looking forward to talking about. So until next time, take care everybody, and stay safe.